hello guys welcome back to sap 2000 video tutorials in this video tutorial we will go through uh, moving loads so first I will draw my frame I'll just go to file I'll say new model I'll draw grid in x direction I'll have 4 y direction 1 should be sufficient in z direction 2 should be sufficient <laughs> since the dimensions are in feet in next direction I'll say 12 feet or 15 feet and y direction 1 and in z direction let's say 10 feet and my origin will be 0 0 0 I'll select ok now as you can see my grid line has been created for me so coming to this part well you see over here I have XY plane I can make that as XZ plane or YZ plane so when you select YZ you can check it out that it's showing in this window over here if you see YZ plane see there and if you see XZ plane the whole shows up and in XY plane the bottom will show up or the top so now you are at level 1 like let's say this uh, above 1 is level 1 and this is ground level so uh, right now you are at level 1 and in order to go to ground level you just need to select this move down in list arrow see there you are at now bottom level so now I'll say XZ and right now I'll just go to define materials I'll add a new material 5000 psi concrete or you can have steel it doesn't matter so I'll just add 5000 psi concrete I'll select OK now I'll go to define section properties I'll add a concrete rectangular section so in here I'll say concrete and I'll say rectangular I'll give the dimensions as um, 8 let's say 2 feet by 18 18 by 24 nothing but and uh, over here I'll need to select my 5000 psi and I'll select this one as RECT rectangular nothing but I can change my modifiers if I want so for now the section is done I'll select OK I'll select OK right now now um, let me draw the frame or so first I'll go from this point to this point and then this point again from here to here and there okay from here to there and that point so now uh, you can see your frame is created so now if you want to turn off your grid line you can do that you can just uh, go in here and say show grid or you can even press ctrl D which will turn off your grid over here control D so that way it will turn off your grid now um, I'll select all the sections and okay I'll select so what I'll do is like I'll go to select over here I'll say select and select lines parallel to what would be that that would be coordinate axis x 
so that way all of my members will be selected at a time and now I can go to assign I'll say frame sections I'll say rectangular I'll select OK OK I didn't needed this to be selected but somehow they got selected and what I'll do is I'll just go to define I'll create a new section property um, I'll say add copy of the property let's say column and I'll say 24 by 24 I'll select OK over here OK I'll select all these members I'll go to assign frame sections I'll select column sorry I'll select OK now these are columns and this will be the beams so right now we are done for this we'll, next we'll go to define in define you can find moving loads at the bottom so first we'll go to path and we'll add a new path so you can see the displayed color will be green in color path will be one and okay let me just before we go there let me just turn on some things I'll turn on the labels for my frames I'll select OK so now If you can see this is two three four five six five all right we can just select that and give it right click and the properties will come up so that is label two again we'll select that label four and over here it's label 7 so we have 2 4 and 7 so now I'll go to define moving loads paths I'll say add new path I'll define my frame as 2 I'll say center line offset 0 I'll select add and this will be maximum disk Prioritization length will be 10 let it be like that for now say add and then you add for frame 4 select add and then again for 7 say add so now you can f you should find it out in displayed color blue I'll select ok I'll select ok so two four seven that's fine now what I'll do is I'll go to define again moving loads I'll say vehicles I'll add a vehicle let me say a truck okay let's see if we have anything over here um, I hope we find something for loads okay uh, I'll do the HS20 truck and you can see the front axle uh, has 8000 pounds per axle nothing but 8 kips and this one will be 32 kips and 32 kips at a distance of 14 feet to 30 feet so we'll just uh, provide that in a second now I'll say truck HS20 kip feet that's fine I'll say first one will be the leading load always and my first load was 8 kips nothing but as you can see in here 
eight thousand pounds per axle. So I'll say okay, and that was axle load. Sorry. So eight kips. We have units in kips. Say add. Now you'll go and select fixed length. And uh, what's the length we have? Fourteen feet. So I'll say fourteen feet. Load uh, 14 feet as my minimum distance and axle load will be 32 kips. I'll select add and then again fixed length. I'll keep it as 14, it varies from 14 to 30, so I'll keep it as 14 for now. I'll select again 32 kips. I'll select add and I'll say vehicle remains in full length path. I'll select OK for now select ok now you go to define again you say go to moving loads and define your vehicle class so your vehicle name is that one and skill factor will be one say add I'll select ok now once you're done with that you go to define um, load patterns so in here you'll say let's name it as vehicle load and the type will be vehicle live which will be in this more options so if you go down you can find vehicle live self weight multiplier will be zero I'll select add new load pattern and uh, I'll modify this vehicle live load I'll go to um, truck HS20 vehicle path 1 uh, I'll say forward direction I'll select add and then I'll also say in backward direction I'll select add now I'll select ok and ok over here now once I'm done with that I'll go to define once again I'll go to load cases in here you can see vehicle load linear uh, multi-step static I'll modify that I'll go to over here and I'll say moving load so I'll keep the reduction factor as 1 and vehicle 1 scale factor will be 1 I'll select add my path will be selected I'll select OK now and OK over here. Now, once I'm done with this, uh, you might need to assign uh, supports. I'll go to assign joints, restraints. I'll say fixed support. I'll select OK. Now, once I'm done with this. I'll say run in run I do not need to run all of them so I'll just run the vehicle moving load I'll select run now before that I need to save it so I'll say moving load save now the results should come up so you see that is the result of the truck moving now if you start the animation you should see it ok that is fine now you go over here you select your alright that's not what I want I'll go in here, I'll select frames cables, I'll select vehicle load and I'll say moment 3-3 three, three. I'll fill my diagram so you can see that is how it's gonna look I can have my values too if I want values there you go my values will be keep per feet sorry keep feet now um, I'll see the shear 
should select OK. You can see the share in there. And also once you are done with it, you can go to display, so show influence lines. You select your path, you say frame, select the frame label, nothing but let's say 2 for now. And I'll say movement. I'll select OK now. So that is your influence line diagram and it can change to whatever label, whatever frame you want. Four. And I'll say sure. So that's how it keeps changing linear like slowly it uh, this drawing moves towards the end slowly if you see uh, the influence line diagram for frame element 7 so this it keeps moving towards the end so that is how you do moving load analysis in SAP 2000 uh, please comment below if you have any questions Thank you for watching the video guys.